Welcome back to Elevated Inspiration for Sunday School. Hey, we're in lesson eight. This is our third lesson in the book of Philippians. Oh man, this is a great lesson. It is entitled Gaining in Jesus Christ. So if you notice now, we are in our legacy, um, Cogit Legacy version. And this is lesson is going to be taught January the 22nd, 2023. We only got two outlines. All right, so this is going to be short and quick. The first outline is actually in Philippians, the third chapter, uh, looking at verses seven through eight, Paul heritage, Hebrew among Hebrews is that subject. So let's look at this right here. When you think about, when you actually think about what, like I said earlier, we're in chapter three, um, starting with verse seven. When you think about this, this verse seven talks about, but what things were gained to me, those I count loss for Christ. And that's what Paul is saying. Now, remember now we've had, we looked at the first chapter, second chapter of Philippians. Um, we looked at Paul um, and I use the term pettiness. And here he's zeroing in on himself. And it's more like a personal testimony. He said, but what things were gained to me? Where I am right now, remember he's in prison, what things were gained to me, those I counted loss for Christ. And then verses 8 and 9, yea, doubtless, I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Jesus Christ my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but done, that I might win Christ. At this point in his life, he looks back on his life and said, now, all of the things that I have accomplished, I count that as nothing that I may know the knowledge of Christ. And then verse nine, and be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness, which is of God by faith. So, so. He used the word done. Done me, you know, nothing. I'm sorry, I'm highlighting it right there. Done. And he's saying everything that I have thought was great in my life, if it wasn't Christ, it's nothing. So my takeaway, what is my takeaway? One can only give up. Now listen now. One can only give up that which one has. One cannot give up what one does not have. See, Paul could speak with authority concerning the worthlessness of something he once highly valued, valued which was his position in Judaism. Now, if you think about it, I want to pick out four things because if you look back at verse 5, it lists four things. What Paul counted as done. All right, first, he was, he considered himself a Jew, born a Jew, circumcised the eighth day. He was not a proselyte. He wasn't converted to Judaism. He was a born a Jew to the point that he was circumcised on the eighth day, just like it was proclaimed in scriptures in the Old Testament. Second, he was pure Jew, not a mixed descendant. Remember in Palestine, you have a lot of individuals that was mixed. Paul said, I'm a pure Jew. I'm a pure Hebrew. Third, he was of the tribe of Benjamin. Now, this is a unique tribe. You remember, this is a tribe that was loyal to the divinity line when the kingdom was divided. They stayed true to the divinity line of the southern kingdom, the tribe of Benjamin. And then fourth, he was a Hebrew of the Hebrews. This is a phrase often used to designate those who retain that natural language. Remember now, he was born in Taurus, which was a Greek city, and a lot of them spoke Greek. However, Paul, not only could he speak Greek, but he maintained his native language, which is of the Hebrew. And then what he's saying is, I count all of this as done. Nothing that I might win Christ. So the second outline. 
what it means to know Christ is what he's saying. And then we're looking at just two verses here. And I said, these are my two favorite verses. Well, especially the first one. I love this verse here. Paul is saying that I may know him. Notice here. I may know him. Talking about Jesus. Paul said, I count all those accomplishments in the Judaism as being a Jew as done as nothing because I want to know Jesus. Not only that, I want to know the power of his resurrection. See, to know, that is to experience the effectiveness of the power of Christ's resurrection. He wishes to experience the transforming, life-changing power of with which Christ has been endowed through his resurrection. Let's think about that for a few minutes. Christ rose from the grave such that, that death could not keep him down. And Paul is saying, I want to know that person. I want to experience that power. And then he didn't leave out this other part and the fellowship of his suffering. I, don't, I want to maintain all of it. I want to have it all. When it comes to Christ, I want every part of I want to experience the power of his resurrection. I want to ex fellowship in his suffering. So he can actually say that because no, notice where he is. He's in prison, writing. Death is intimate. There's two things can happen to him. He can either be set free or he can die. And then he ends by saying, being made conformable unto his death. So he said, my whole life, I want to live for Jesus and I want to conform to Jesus and I want to die and be raised, risen from the grave like Jesus. If by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. Now, in verse 11, Paul is not talking about rising from the dead when Jesus come back. Even though this is going to happen, he's talking about experiencing Jesus' resurrection power in this life to overcome every challenge. But can you imagine that? That power of raising from the dead is so powerful, but yet we can experience the resurrection power right here, right now, today. Pastor Paul is thinking outside the box. He said, man, if I can know Jesus for who he is, I can experience his resurrection power. I can experience his suffering. That is awesome when you think about it. So what is my takeaway? My takeaway is Paul wanted to know Christ and the power of his resurrection. To know Christ is not just an intellectual understanding of who he is, it is the most intimate relationship with him. He wants a relationship like a husband and wife relationship, intimate relationship with Christ. To know Christ is to experience his life. When we suffer, we are carrying our cross and experience a bit of what Christ endured for us. Wow, that is amazing when you think about it. So what is my lesson learned from this? My lesson learned is simple. While we do not have our origin in eternity, but God shares his eternity with us from the day of our conversion onward. Even though we're not like angels that can pinpoint our day of origin all the way back before the world began, but we know we can experience eternity once we get converted. Now, now, if we know that, it's time for us to know Christ from the experiential perspective. By ongoing his resurrection, transforming, life-changing power with the fellowship of his suffering. So to suffer with Christ means to live and serve him under any circumstances. Or, let me put it another way. I need to want to be like him in holiness. 
So my thought to remember is that I may know Jesus. So let's take a few minutes here in reflection. I remember verse was, but what things were gained to me, those I count loss for Christ. You know, when you think about it today, we all want like degrees. In our modern society, the more degrees you have, the more, number one, money you can make, prestige you can have. Paul had those things in the Jewish community when you think about it. He had privilege because he was a Jew. In his world, he was the up and up coming. He was a Pharisee among the Pharisees. He, like he said, he, he was a Hebrew of the Hebrews. But he looked at it and he counted all those things as done. As nothing. As loss for Christ. On the road to Damascus, he experienced Christ. So my thought, and more I think about this lesson, sometimes we go through the confession, we go through accepting Christ as our personal Savior, but do we ever get to know him? like Paul is talking about in this scripture. Do we really know Jesus? Do we have an intimate relationship with him? This is what Paul is talking about in the third chapter of Philippians. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for Jesus. Help us to follow Paul's example and seek to know you more profoundly and inwardly. Open our eyes and ears and mainly our heart to receive you so that we may love you the way you deserve to be loved. And then we should be able to love others likewise. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you.